Hello, welcome back to Plot 7A. And today what I'm going to be doing is showing you my sweet corn, because I said in a previous video that I would show you the sweet corn. And I'm also going to be planting out my savoy cabbages. So the variety of cabbage that I'm growing this year is Savoy cabbage and I've sown this from seed in these little modules here. I sowed nine seeds, well I sowed 18 seeds, I put two in each hole and they all germinated which was great. I have lost one just in there, but that doesn't actually matter because I only had space for eight so I had a spare. Now I don't have a spare. but. Uh, these eight are all looking strong and healthy, so I'm happy with them. And they are ready to go out today. Uh, I've grown Savoy cabbage purely because it is my absolute favourite variety of cabbage. Um, I love it. And I'm hoping to be able to eat at least one of these for Christmas dinner, if everything goes to plan. <laughs> um, I'm going to be grow um, planting these out in my raised bed at the end of my plot there. I've dug it over, got some compost in, and uh, it's all ready to go. The cabbages are going to need protection, they are going to need some netting over them. I tried to go and buy some netting today but the garden centre I went to didn't have any, which was a bit of a pain. So I'm going to improvise with some uh, leftover, uh, I think they were part of a chicken run, some leftover frames with a uh, wire across them that were left here by the previous plot holder and I've kept hold of them because they are useful for covering things and providing a bit of protection. So until I can get some netting or some fine mesh fabric to cover these, I am going to be using my wire sort of fencing post things. <laughs> um, but I would say do definitely, if you're planting out cabbages, definitely, definitely cover them with something. Uh, last year or the year before I planted out some cabbages and I left them for one day overnight because I forgot my netting and I came down the next day to cover them and they had been completely destroyed, there was nothing left of them so I had to actually go to the garden centre and buy some more which was a massive pain. So yeah, definitely cover the cabbages. <laughs> um, I've also got some little cabbage collars to go around the base of each plant just to deter cabbage fly because what they'll do is they will lay their eggs around the base and then the larvae will burrow down uh, you'll get little maggots underneath eating the roots and it will either destroy your plant or severely impact the growth so I'm hoping once I've got netting that won't be too much of a problem anyway but I am going to give them each a little cabbage collar just for a little bit of added protection and uh, that is what I'm going to do if you've got acidic soil, it would be good to add some lime into it as well, just to prevent diseases. Um, I think club root is a disease that I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe that's caused um, by a lack of lime or a more acidic soil. <clears throat> I say I may be wrong there. Club root is definitely a uh, disease that affects brassicas. I can't quite remember without checking if it is caused by the lack of lime. I believe adding lime to the soil will help, help with that anyway. Um, so yeah, we're going to sow, so we're going to plant out the cabbages and I'm also going to show you the sweet corn because I did say that I would show you my sweet corn. So let's get on with some planting. So this is a bed that I have allocated for my cabbages. And it is about two metres long by a metre wide. And I'm going to try and fit the eight cabbages in this entire bed. Um, obviously the centre line's there, I can tell that's where the centre is. So I've got to have four in this section and four behind and I'm going to space them out evenly and get them dug in and hopefully they'll have enough space to grow. Um, yeah, I'm hoping they've got enough space to grow. I think we should be, should be alright I think. <laughs> I have gone through this bed 
and I've taken out, there was loads of hard soil like that and I've taken out the majority of it. Some of it is still left in but I don't really want those hard lumps because they don't break up very well and they're not going to be good for growing so I've taken out as many of them as I can and I've also put in a little bit of compost. Um, the rest of the soil is fairly good, it's fairly nice light sandy soil um, obviously because it's a raised bed and when I put this raised bed in about three years ago um, I put in a mixture of compost and topsoil and so it is still fairly decent soil there so I've added a little bit more compost but I'm hoping this is going to give them everything they need drainage wise um, and food wise so hopefully that'll work just going to try and get the spacing for these first. Oh god, okay that did not go as planned. I didn't want them to fall out like that. Looks like they're all right though. go so I've got all eight out now. Um, the compost is fairly dry so a couple of them have to sort of crumble out but I think hopefully we'll be okay and now I'm just going to line them up get them where I want them to be and then plant them. So I think I'm happy with this spacing now. Now all I'm going to do is dig a little planting hole get each individual plant in get a cabbage collar on them and then get them covered up and watered and that should hopefully be the cabbage bed done. So these here are the cabbage collars I was talking about and they are basically just little cardboard discs that you fit around the base of each plant and that deters the cabbage root fly and should hopefully minimise problems from that. Um, it also suppresses the weeds and helps retain a bit of moisture so that's all good. Um, I just got these from the garden centre, 3 99 but half price so one ninety nine two pounds. Um, you could also use just uh, recycled materials that you've got at home, such as carpet underlay or um, cardboard. Anything basically that you can fashion into a little ring to get around the base of the cabbage. So what I'm going to do now is fit one of these to each individual plant and hope that it keeps the cabbage root fly away. <laughs> tiny little cardboard discs with a little slit in them so you can fit them around the base of the plant. So pretty simple, pretty easy and you could probably make your own and save yourself a few, well a couple of pounds. 
but I just uh, went for the easy option. <laughs> yeah, just open them out like so. And then carefully fit them around the base of each plant. That's the collars on now. Um, hopefully they've got now some protection from cabbage root fly. And now what I want to do is get my netting and my wire fences on top to protect them from the birds and butterflies. I have noticed what I think could be a slight problem and that is the fact that this one here is so much higher than the level of the raised bed. I hadn't been anticipating that, I've been expecting them to be below the level. So I'm going to try and get those uh, fences on top now and see if it causes any damage or looks like it could cause damage. And if it does, then I'm going to have to quickly think of another plan. going to need a plan B for that one I think. It's just squashing down on top of there too much and I don't want to risk it being damaged so give me a minute. So let me introduce you to plan B which is basically bricks balanced very precariously around the edge of the bed to so raise it up and give me a little more height to get the um, I still don't know what to call them. Let's just call them the netting. We'll just call it the netting. <laughs> to get the netting balanced across. Um, it's not the best plan. These are these ones here are wobbly. The ones on the corners are fine, but the ones in the middle are a bit wobbly. So I think next week, Monday, Tuesday, get some netting, get up here, get it properly covered. But for now, I'm going to work with what I've got and uh, all I've really got to work with is bricks. <laughs> so that's part of the fun isn't it? Finding a solution to random little problems. Hmm. Yeah, so let's uh, try and get this netting on top now. I haven't tested it yet so it could all still go wrong but we'll try and get them covered up now at least a little bit. There we have it. Impro improvised bird and butterfly netting because the garden centre didn't have any. I think it's going to work for keeping the birds out. Um, obviously there is a gap between these and the start of the raised bed so potentially bugs and butterflies could get in there but I'm hoping they won't. I'm really hoping that they don't. And then yeah, early next week, I will get this covered up properly because it can't stay like this. 
but this just makes sure that hopefully when I next come down here I will still have cabbages unlike last year or the year before when I didn't. So that is the cabbage bed. I'm going to obviously water them in well, especially because it's so hot today. But I will do that in a minute. And first off, I will just show you my sweet corn and have a little chat about my sweet corn. <laughs> so these are my sweet corn plants, which I am so happy with. I'm so happy with how they're doing right now. Um, I planted them out about three about three weeks ago I planted these out and they have already grown so so much um, and I was worried about slug damage with the sweet corn because I know that slugs and snails do really like the nice tender young leaves and so what I did around the base of each one I bought some um, Channel Island seaweeds which I got online and that is basically um, just chopped seaweed from the shores of Guernsey and it is meant to be a slug repellent initially it keeps the slugs away because the saltiness and the sharpness of it the slugs and snails don't like and then once it has done its job you can dig it into the soil and that will then uh, give the soil lots of nutrients which is great um, so I put that around the base of each plant and it seems to have done the trick. I mean, a lot of the other things on my allotment have got so much slug damage. Uh, I've lost lettuces, I've lost spinach, bolossi beans, which are next to the sweet corn. Half of them have just gone. Uh, I've got gaps and gaps in my rows. Um, and considering they are right next door to the sweet corn, and the sweet corn has got next to no slug damage, and I haven't lost any of them, so that has been a big success for me that seems to have worked really well um, anyway what was I saying so yeah so I put them in about three weeks ago uh, some of you may notice straight away that mine are in well they're sort of in blocky rows but predominantly they are in rows rather than blocks and I know that some of you will be sitting there saying no 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 blocks you must plant sweet corn in blocks and generally, yes, that is the key. Sweet corn should generally be planted in blocks because unlike other vegetables um, and flowers, sweet corn isn't pollinated by bees, it is pollinated by um, wind. So when they grow tall and they've got their tassels, the wind blows and that then pollinates the individual plants. Uh, so growing in blocks is uh, definitely preferential because then you get a better spread of the um, pollen or whatnot, and you get better pollination. So, always plant <laughs> um, sweet corn in blocks, unless, <laughs> and this is the key, unless, like me, you are growing the mini pop variety, which is basically um, it's the mini, like the ones you see in stir fries, the small, the small cobs, the small, immature cobs there. Um, if you're growing mini pot, they can be planted in rows, and the reason for that is that it is harvested before the need for pollination. And so you don't need the blocks and you don't need the wind pollination because you're harvesting it before that. So that is why my sweet corn is in rows. Any other variety, and I would have been block planting it, um, because as a rule, sweet corn should be block planted to aid with pollination. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I am so happy with how these have come on. When I planted them, they were about that tall. So they pretty much doubled in size in three weeks. And they are looking so, so healthy, and I'm so pleased with how they are doing. Um, another thing that you can do with sweet corn, and I'm not doing it this year, but I thought I may as well tell you because it's um, something you might like to try. And it's a technique called the Three Sisters. And what it is, is you basically plant your sweet corn in blocks <laughs> and um, up each corn you can grow a climbing bean. So a French bean would be ideal. Um, yeah, basically any little climbing bean can be grown up the stalk of the sweet corn. And the sweet corn will provide the support 
for the bean. And then the third of the three sisters is uh, something like a courgette plant, a squash plant. Um, I tried it a couple of years back with courgettes. Um, you take courgette plants and you plant them in the gaps in between. Obviously I wouldn't even get courgette plants in the gaps in between anyway because I, again, mine are smaller, I have spaced them fairly close together. Um, if you're doing the three sisters technique, follow the spacing for the sweet corn. In fact you should do that anyway actually, it's a really good idea with sweet corn. Um, purely again because of the pollination you need them to be the spacing that the packet tells you. And again because I don't need the pollination for these, for harvesting, I space them a little bit closer than I should really have done. Um, but yeah, follow the spacing and then pop a courgette plant in the gaps in between and a French bean or a climbing bean of some kind to go up the support of the sweet corn. And that uh, is known as a three sisters technique and it's a way of growing three different crops in a smaller amount of space and the idea is that they all, they all help each other out. Um, the squashes, for example, help retain moisture and keep down weeds. The sweet corn is the support for the beans. And uh, the bean flowers and whatnot will attract beneficial insects. So it is a uh, good thing to try. I tried it a couple of years back, um, not with the beans. I just did the squashes and the sweet corn. And it worked fairly well. And again, another year I may try the actual technique of all three of them. But that's just, uh, went off on a little bit of a tangent there, didn't I? But it's something that saves space. And if you've got a small garden, it's always good to be able to save space and cram in as many crops as possible. And that is about it for today. Um, I've rambled on about sweet corn for far too long now. Uh, but I was just excited about it. It was a last minute addition to the plot this year. Uh, I hadn't planned to have it in there and... I wasn't going to and then I realised I was going to have a little bit of space left over and I decided that I'd really like some sweet corn so I sowed the seeds I can't remember when <laughs> and they all came up and I've transferred them all and I am so happy with how they are doing um, yes yeah, so I think that's about it for today I'm going to get on with some weeding now because this plot needs a thorough weed um, but thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I haven't bored you too much with my ramblings today. I feel like I've rambled a lot today. I feel like I've rambled a lot today and I'm still doing it now. <laughs> um, if you have enjoyed this video, I would really love it if you subscribed or gave it a like. That is always appreciated. And you can also follow me on my blog. I've got a few articles up on my blog. Um, it's a new blog that I started a couple of months back. So I think there's about 10 or 11 articles on there at the minute. But if you want to have a read, um, things like uh, I've got an article on planting chilies and how I look after my chilies. Um, I've got one about starting the allotment. And it's basically what I do on video, but in a little bit, I suppose, a little bit more in depth and a little bit more... Um, targeted with how-to guides and how I do things so yeah I'll put the link in the description to my blog excuse me hiccup and yeah thank you for watching today and I shall see you all next time bye for now <laughs>